Hi everyone, it's me, Jenna Ryan. I'm back from Cabo San Lucas. I just got back and had a wonderful trip. And um, I was able to do some inner healing while I was gone. And I want to try to explain to you kind of, my place is just an absolute disaster. If you could see the floor, it's like my luggage, okay? I haven't even had a chance. And I, had, I got a new henna tattoo. This is a mandala. And a mandala is very meaningful for me because it's about, um, it's a Jungian, Jung, Alfred Jung, um, really made it popular in psychology because it represents the personality. And I love mandalas. I was on the beach and um, I created this mandala and told the guy to do it. He had all these like stencils and I said, no, I want this. And so I have so much experience with art journaling because I journal constantly and do art because it's a healing practice for me that I was able to just whip this up in two minutes. You should see the first mandala I ever drew. Drew, I should show you the photo. It is, I mean, it was so horrendous. But here is my mandala and it's henna and they put it on and it lasts about 15 days. It means a lot to me because to me, it means the integration of the personality because I was abused as a child and as a child, I, I'm a child of, of severe child abuse, um, physically, emotionally. And um, the mandala, I was, my, my whole entire identity was fractured in a million pieces because I was raised in a very narcissistic, psychopathic, horrific environment. And so, one day I realized how shattered I was and and then I started doing these mandalas as a representation of of the integration of the personality. So if you study mandalas from a psychological perspective, they have a lot of meaning and to me they have a lot of meaning. And I also you can't really see it, but I also got this beautiful scarf from the beach which is another mandala. I love mandalas. I started talking about mandalas and now all of a sudden, I started talking like about it on Twitter about five or six years ago. I used to have a bunch of people follow me on Twitter all the time, but I don't do it much anymore. But then I started seeing them everywhere. So it's amazing how the internet, the information on the internet really travels very quickly. Okay, but today the topic that we're going to talk about is people keep asking me about, they say that one of the their favorite videos that I've done was the series on how to stop seeking nurture from the betrayal source. And I must tell you, my friends, this is something I'm dealing with now. This is not, you know, something I'm over. This is, but I'm getting over and I'm, I'm, I'm gaining a lot of ground. But I want you to know, if I didn't say it on the video, it's because I just didn't know yet. So since I created that series, I found out a couple of more things to kind of add to the whole series, and that would be that the pain that you're feeling, let's talk about that pain that's underneath. You remember how I said we have to just sit with ourselves? You have to sit with the pain, okay? So what I did is I found out, I figured out through counseling and books and reading and soul searching and art journaling, I found in all just being in the beach and everything, I realized or figured it all out, figured this part out that it's toxic shame. What's underneath, what causes us to compulsively be addicted to other people, to contact people that are painful to us and harmful to us is because of toxic shame, which means what is toxic shame? Well, we need a video on it, but I'll just tell you right now. Toxic shame is whenever you're a child and your, un, your childhood dependency needs do not get met. Your needs for nurture, your needs for affection, those basic core needs of every human being that you needed were not met. Whenever this happens, a child, in order to survive, the brain must do something or it will, you'll go insane. And in order to protect you, and it, what it did was it took the blame. You took the blame as a child. 
someone was not able to give you what you needed for whatever reason, whatever, whether, you know, whether they're an abuser, whether they're a narcissist, whether they just didn't know, whether they were too young, whether they didn't get it on their own, for whatever reason, you took the blame because your mom or caretaker, primary caretaker, was unable to meet your primary core dependency needs. When this happens, you are infiltrated, inoculated with toxic shame. Toxic shame <coughs> is a big subject. We need our own video on it. But let's suffice it to say for now, toxic shame is not yours. It's toxic. You're feeling this way because of something someone else did. It's not healthy shame. It's not normal shame. It's not even your shame. It may not even be your parents' shame. It's passed down from generation to generation. And I kind of look at it like I'm the chosen one who is going to reconcile this shame and this pain and this these things from generations that have come down on me because I'm not going to be okay with it. I'm going to fight it and I'm going to heal. And I'm going to reconcile it by journaling, by reading, and by doing the inner work. And that's what we're going to talk about is the inner work that it takes. So this toxic shame is what drives us to, okay, it's what drives us to go after people that are not good for us. It's what drives us to go after people who have the knife in their hand and are only going to hurt us. Because toxic shame is a lie that we have believed, that we've been fed. It's the projections of the abusers if, if it's somebody that was abusive towards you, for example, when I was a little girl, two and a half years old, my stepfather made me eat okra, boiled okra, and yelled at me and said horrible things to me. This created in me toxic shame because a child needs to think that their parents are God. Because if you don't, you have a child idolizes their parents, so there's nothing for the child to do in order to psychologically survive the child must take the blame. So what I did when I was two and a half years old is I took the blame for this asshole who was trying to make me eat boiled okra. I'm sorry. I think he's an asshole. I'm not going to be nice. Okay, I'll be nice. Anyway, see, that's my anger I need to deal with. I'm just not ready to deal with it right this second, okay? I'm doing a video on toxic shame. Okay, so toxic shame, getting it out, realizing that it is a lie. If I have pain inside that's causing me to go after someone or to long for someone who's harmful to me, that means inside I believe that that is what I deserve. Somewhere deep inside, subconscious, it's not a conscious thing, it's subconscious underneath it all. And so what I have to do is I have to meet myself as that two and a half little girl who was abused and I have to literally go back in my heart, in my mind, in my soul and I have to begin to nurture that two and a half year old little girl who was so abused and I was abused on multiple levels, on multiple occasions, at multiple ages so I have to go back on every age and take care of the little girl that was left behind because the little girl went into hiding she was told, taught, unfortunately, by her caretakers that she was not worth anything, that she was not worth being treated well. Myself, my little self in me that's still there, it doesn't go away, my authentic self was shamed for who I am. And, and that shame causes pain. And the reason it causes pain is because anything that's not true Anything that's a lie is going to hurt. If it weren't, if it if it were the truth, it wouldn't hurt. Our psyches are set up to be in pain when a lie is received. And so this lie, this perpetual lie, because what happens is, is when your psyche is made up of lies, because whenever your needs are not being met, whenever your core needs for nurture and acceptance and affection and in all the things that a person needs when those core needs are not met what happens is is you begin to hate yourself and you begin to separate from yourself and you begin to 
objectify yourself and you begin to have what they call toxic shame. Toxic shame not being your shame. So what you have to do is go back and tell the little girl, you know, it's 2016 and I'm Jenna Ryan now. I'm Jenna Ryan and I could tell any son of a bitch to eat your own damn yolk okra. Yokra, I'm kidding. Go eat your own okra. I don't have to eat anybody's okra. I don't owe anybody anything. I, I am a wonderful person. I know who I am. I'm good to myself. I take care of myself. I'm learning. I read books. I have friendships. I'm going to, to CODA meetings to help me to develop stronger relationships. And I don't ache anymore for people that are bad for me. So let's talk about this. This is an ongoing process. Every day you have to be really in tune with your little girl or little boy inside. And you have got to begin to be there for yourself. So let's talk about how it works. Okay, hopefully I have time. Okay, when you're a little kid, okay, I like to think of, I created this. This is really cool. Are you ready? Okay, I like to think of it like a C. Now, let's say you had a healthy parent that was able to meet your needs properly. Then it would have been a circle, okay? Because you would have been like, hi, mommy. And the child would have been like, hi, child. And it would have all been okay. It would have been a circle, okay? But what happens is, is that the mom cannot provide what you need or the, or the secondary caretaker, the dad, but it starts with the mom. Then you're a C. So you give out love, but it doesn't come back to you because your mom caretaker just takes it. And that's often what happens with a narcissist where the child begins to meet the needs of the narcissist. So the circle never happens. You never fulfill that circle. So what happens is, is you keep giving love away. You're giving all your beautiful, glorious, miraculous, fabulous love away every day, night and day, night and day, night and day, trying to get external validation that you never got as a child. So what's happening is, is you're giving yourself away. You're giving your love away. We're giving our love away. So when you're lying there and you're thinking about this person who has cheated on you, who has let you know under no uncertain terms and you know for a fact that they are not going to respect you and do the things that you want because there's certain things you need and you deserve okay we're going to talk about that on another video but for right now i just want you to understand this is let's just say this is somebody that's that's clearly not a player in your life yet you're longing for this person you're wanting this person at night let's say you've had a drink and suddenly you just feel this urge to contact this person and you yearn for this person and you ache for this person well I'm here to tell you it's not the person you're yearning for or aching for you are just projecting unmet childhood needs onto this third party who acts just like the person who abandoned you in childhood and really what you're not really what you're needing is you're needing that circle filled and the only person that can do it today since you didn't get it when you were a kid I'm sorry I didn't either it hurts oh it hurts the only way we can get it today is if we complete the circle we have to complete that damn circle ourselves and it is a hard to do it is not easy to do it is difficult but it can be done little by little um, you begin to focus on yourself okay if you're sitting there longing for someone that tells me if I'm longing for someone we instantly need to have mindfulness and say okay what can I do for me and what I personally have had to do literally is take those feelings of longing and reroute them back to myself and I go okay Jenna you are beautiful and you are wonderful and you are worth loving okay Jenna you are the, and I literally and it is not fun especially in the beginning it's not the funnest thing in the world it's a lot more fun it's a lot more comfortable to do what we've always done which is throw ourselves after under the bus and go after someone who can't give us what we need 
because sometimes we can become addicted to a feeling. But I'm telling you right now, if you will just take reroute, make the circle, make the circle. Right now you're a C. Make the circle, reroute. We have to rewire our brains. I'm going to be talking more about this in the future, but this is your tonight's video. And I hope you appreciated it because I did. I thought it was good. And I'm so grateful for everyone. And I'm so grateful for y'all. Y'all mean the world to me. And this is my labor of love. And I'm getting healing. And y'all are getting healing too. And we are going to finish the circle until no MF can get in and hurt us anymore. Right? Because we love ourselves and we take good care of ourselves. I'm Jenna Ryan. Until next time, I will talk to you soon.